Hello, my friends. Good morning. I am so, so, so excited this morning to be interviewing Rachel Brown. She is a most interesting person, and she has a story to tell that I know you're going to be interested in. And we're going to talk a little bit about me, too, because I want to let you know how successful I have been losing the last 10 pounds that I carried around for ugh, 40 plus years, you know, those 10, those extra pesky pounds from having babies. And I finally, finally, finally lost the weight. And oatmeal was really a huge part of my journey. Anyway, I see that Rachel is about to come on board with us. So give me a second. Let's get her in. And I'm going to say hello, meanwhile, to everybody who's coming by. I'm so glad that you're here this morning. Really, really excited. And let's see. Rachel, you're here. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's it's early for you, no? It is. It's uh, 7 a.m. Yeah. Uh, are you used yeah. to getting up early? Usually I'm up at 5.30 every morning, so, yep, oh, yep. Oh, wow, I bow to you. How do you do that? Let us know. <laughs> Give us your secret. I have a husband who is an early riser. That's how I do it. <laughs> cool, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so over the years, I've just got, I, I thought I was an early riser when I would get up at 7 a.m., but uh -huh. he, in college, rode crew, and they had to go, you know, okay. down at 4.30 a.m. for workout, so he just became a very early riser, so... Yeah, now now that's what we are. <laughs> cool. Um, so, all right. Well, let's let's start off by first of all saying, in addition to saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. In addition to that, we want to talk about the big thing that's going on for both of us and for about 150 or so other people uh, who have contributed their. Um, hearts and their souls to the vegan health bundle which is a collection of 150 ebooks of various topics ranging from um, help me out here recipes to exercise oh books to courses video courses to yeah. mindset and and um, lifestyle information right lots and lots yeah of stuff. i mean three minute therapy vegan sustainable vegan advocacy gut health courses yeah, incredible breadth of information in this bundle for sure. Plus two over 2,000 recipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've already tried a bunch of them um, and I'm going to continue to do so long after the, the bundle is over, which by the way, I should mention. So the bundle was sched is scheduled. It started on March 1st, goes through March 10th, and then it will be no more. So if you want to get this bundle, trust me, you better do it now because it's going to go bye-bye. Um, and the way you do that is you can go to either my Instagram profile or you can go to Rachel's Instagram profile. And if you're not on Instagram, because I'm also streaming to Facebook and YouTube, just head on over to, to Instagram and find me at Ellen's Healthy Kitchen or Rachel at Four Forks Sake. And yep. you can look in the bio. It's really easy to see. There's a link. You click on it, boom, and you can order the bundle and then you can immediately download it to your device of choice or devices of choice, and then you'll have it, you know, for the rest of your life. So make yeah. sure to do that pronto. And then in the meantime, let's get started and really talk about some juicy stuff. Where should we start? Yeah, well, I was just gonna say my handle is for Fork's sake book, wow. which is this is my book. And that's what I've included in the bundle, along with some recipes for kids, um, a salad, uh, recipe flower power salad for recipe that was originally in forks over knives. They just released it in time for me to put it in this bundle. So uh, really fun to have that in there. And then um, there's also this cookbook that comes with the bundle that we all contributed to as well with a whole bunch of spring themed recipes. So I've got some um, deviled not egg dig, <laughs> deviled not eggs in there. So they're little potatoes that look like deviled eggs. Perfect for functions, you know, whether, whatever, graduation, Easter, uh -huh, springtime uh -huh. fun. So, and can you yeah, just, yeah. would you do me a favor and just hold up your book again so we can see it? I know it's going to be backwards sure. to most people, but they can see yes. for Fork's sake. And the, and your profile is for F O R Forks, like what you use for food, for Fork's yes. sake book. And that's your, yes. that's your the title of your profile. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, and you also mentioned the collaborative 
book that we all did, the ebook. And I'm so yeah. excited about that. I was flipping through it, you know, on my phone and I just could not believe the number of recipes. Everyone was like, oh my God, I have to try that. Oh, look, I know that looks so good. I contributed <laughs> a recipe for gluten-free matzah. Yeah. Awesome. So great. Yeah. So great. Yeah. I think it'll be so fun. Uh, yeah. I think there are literally months and months worth of recipes now yeah. in my lineup, you know, yeah. everything from uh, Northern Indian food. I mean, yes. all the recipes are not only vegan, they're whole food, plant-based, no oil. No oil. So no oil. that is really hard to find, as you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to find these, to just have them all in one place is such a yes. great, great, great thing. I had uh, someone drop off some um, upholstery that we're having done here at the house uh, a couple of days ago, and we were chatting about it. And I showed her the the bundle. I showed her the you know my my picture of my um, my ebook, and we were talking a little bit about the idea of cooking without oil. And she said, "Oh no no no, I can't do that. I'm I'm Italian. I I can't cook without oil." And I said, "Well." Actually, you can, and I guarantee you it will taste delicious. And if you ever want like a little tutorial because you've been so good to us, I will <laughs> I will show you. So people just need to know that it's possible to yeah. learn how to do that. Um, I know. I spoke with a woman yesterday who um, she read my book a year ago. We actually went rock climbing, um, both our couples up in San Francisco. And um, she's, I, I'm going to guess late 60s. And um, they changed their entire way of eating a year ago after she read my book. And she's like, I almost feel mad. I feel like I was duped into believing I had to use all this oil for years and years. And it's, she's like, I can get things to brown. It's not a problem at all. Right. right. You, yeah. have, you have to know the techniques. You have to have the right yeah. hands. I don't think it really matters what stove you have. You just need to sort of know, and it takes, it takes time. It's, it's, it's like anything yeah. new that you learn. It takes time to learn how to do it. Um, and I, I feel like I have it down pat now. I'm really, I'm really excited yeah. because, of, you know, it's, and I keep, yeah. um, I keep a, a, just a bottle of water by the stove and I use that. Sometimes I'll use stock, but more often than not, I use the water yeah. and it's just, it's super easy. Uh, and, yeah. and I mentioned, I think my, my title, I decided to make the title for this live, I lost the last 10 pounds with oatmeal. And I really, really meant that. And we're going to get to that in a little bit, but I, I don't want to sidetrack yet because I'm just, I want to talk about how excited I am about A, the bundle, B, talking to you and having this opportunity. So again, uh, you know what? I know where we can start. I will tell you that I made a recipe from his name is Chris, and I'm totally blanking. It might be Kimball. He has a, several ebooks of raw recipes. And I was telling my husband this morning that I tried following more of a raw style diet about 12 years ago when I was at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition as a yeah. student. And I was freaked out. <clears throat> and the only way I can explain it is that I was freaked out because of how intense it was. I, I mean, in a good way, intense. And I just, I, I don't think at the time that I was ready for it. And now mm -hmm. I understand that I don't have to be fully raw. I can do raw for, if, for a part of a meal. I can do raw for one meal. I can do raw for two meals and then cook. You know, you can just mix it up. So this morning I made his recipe that was so simple. It was a combination of shredded green cabbage. It called for pear but I didn't have any, so I used apple. And it called for figs, which I didn't have any, so I used dates and mm -hmm. cinnamon. And that's it. Oh, yeah. Yum. It was, I'll show it to you. I have it right here. It's still in the bowl. I, I, I haven't finished it yet. It was just such a huge amount. So here it is. Wow. It's basically yeah. coleslaw in a way, but a raw coleslaw without the mayonnaise. And it's called sweet cabbage. And yeah, his name is Chris Kendall. Not Kimball, Kendall, K E N D A L L. And oh my goodness, the recipes he had. I was I was looking at it going, oh, I gotta try that one. I gotta try that one. I gotta try that one. So yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's on my list to do um the wraps that Lissa does. Me too. Oh, this I I don't have the Excalibur dehydrator yet, but that's on that's on my wish list for this year when I have a little more time. Oh, you got it. Nice. I have the Excalibur. I've had it for about 12 years and I haven't used it admittedly that much, but I'm using it now. It's all set up. I ordered yeah. these from Amazon and I am ready to rock and roll with those wraps. I can't wait to try them. Did you see the blue ones that she has? Yes. Yes. Yeah. With what spirulina I think is what, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Spirulina. yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're gorgeous. So I'm, I'm just super yeah. excited about it. Um, yeah. Okay. So before we go uh, on and talk more about, well, oh, 
Go. I'll show you something I made. Yes, please. Have you made Chef AJ's? These are her um, Goodman peanut chews. No, and that she created. no, and shame on me, shame on me, because I grew up in New Jersey where Goodman's peanut chews were like standard in the candy store, and yeah. I love them. So how do they come out? They are so so good. These are the last two, and I I made a half recipe, but I mean it made a. I didn't. Let's see. Like it was probably this size, you know, like that. And um, she said in the recipe that she gave, she will cut it into 64 pieces. So they're tiny bite-sized pieces, but they're so deliciously rich. The chocolate is unsweetened and you use a little date syrup, um, but they're delicious. Yeah. And I believe they're four ingredients. So yeah, yeah amazing. Yeah. yeah, you know, those peanut chews used to come in this little sleeve, a candy sleeve. I can picture, literally picture the... <laughs> the, the, the yep. wrapper that it came in and it was it was like maybe six little pieces okay that made up like this much and so that's yes. why she you know cutting them into 64 pieces kind of simulates what they really were so well yeah. I, oh thank you for mentioning that and i'm definitely gonna gonna try that uh yeah okay so before we talk about me i want to talk about you and i have a confession to make i'm a fangirl <laughs> I, well, thank you. <laughs> I, I've been, I think I first learned about your work when I listened to a podcast that you did with Riff Esselstyn. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's when I said, oh, I'm going to have to get to know this person. And so I started really reading up on you and following you on, on social. And so <clears throat> I'm really fascinated with your story and would love for, for our viewers, the people who are watching, to listen and, and learn from you. And I will mention too, if anybody has any questions, at the very bottom of your screen, there are several icons. The icon on the right is an airplane icon. And if you want to share this live with anybody who you think might benefit, and I bet everybody knows at least one person, just click on that and share it with that person. And then also to the left of that, there's a question mark inside of a comment bubble and you can click on that and you can ask questions and I will click on it as soon as I see it because I'm the host and I can see that and I will then put it up on the screen and other people can see the question that you're asking. So having said that, my question to you is please just tell us tell us about you and about your book and about your journey. Sure, sure. Well, uh, almost 14 years ago now, um, we had something happened that really changed the trajectory of how we're eating and really how we're living now. Um, but I thought I was healthy growing up. I had a mostly vegetarian mother who um, grew up on the West Coast and loved fish, but um, she really would cook meat like once a week for my dad, primarily. Um, and we ate healthy. We had, we had fruits and vegetables at every meal. You know, we didn't have junk food. We didn't eat it um, fast food very often. Um, so I thought I was pretty healthy. And in my early twenties, I, I was also an athlete. I, I played sports. I danced, I hiked and, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, but in my early put me on medication and I didn't want to do that because my dad has always been on cholesterol medication and, um, he would get these weird side effects like lose his taste. I think it was Lipitor with that one, but lose his taste and he'd have to change medications. And I just knew I didn't want to do that. So I would ask the doctors, what can I do? You know? And they would say, well, cut back on eggs and cheese, exercise some more. And so I just kept doing that and it would slowly creep back up. Um, and then 14 years ago, um, our nephew was five years old and he was diagnosed with cancer and his mom was in nursing school at the time. And she had a professor who asked her if she'd looked at the role of nutrition in cancer. Now they had like a small hobby farm. Um, they had a big garden, but they also had a lot of animals and they were eating a lot of animal products. She had taught me how to pull mozzarella cheese the summer before. So we, I had a cheese making kit, which was really fun <laughs> with the kids, but um, not, not fun for my arteries. Um, and, um, so this professor gave her the China study and told her to watch forks over knives and they changed their diet overnight completely. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have to, you have to read this. And so I did. And my initial reaction after reading the China study was that I was really mad. 
I just couldn't believe that this information was readily out there and nobody had told me this. No doctor, medical professional had ever mentioned that by switching a few things um, that I could totally eliminate the need for any kind of medication, um, especially as it comes to cholesterol. I could reverse diseases, you know, I mean, just it was a huge light bulb moment. So we washed forks over knives as well. And um, my whole family, our kids were six and eight, you know, so they were young. My daughter, we had 13 chickens. She had a little organic egg business that she sold to neighbors. Um, so, but everybody was game to give this a try. So I love Dr. McDougall and Mary McDougall. They put everything online for free. So, you know, 5,000 recipes or something. So I printed off recipes and we thought, okay, we're gonna do this for 10 days and see. So I got my blood work done and I couldn't get back in for the blood work until day 17. But then I went and saw my doctor and he said, what are you doing? Wait, Whatever wait, you're doing. Wait, wait, you continued. So you continued beyond day 10 to follow the same. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. Cause I couldn't get that. Got it. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I got the second blood draw in 17 days. So, uh, but now I know that all these changes could have occurred in the first three days actually. So, um, so yeah, it wasn't really the time in factor, but, um, yeah, my cholesterol had dropped 50 points and he said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, lucky for me, he's a lifestyle medicine doctor. I didn't know what that meant at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was the beginning of our journey into eating whole food, plant-based, no oil. And I will say, um, the reason I wrote the book is because I kept trying to give everybody the China study, you know, I would hand it out and people would hand it back very sheepishly. Like, I'm sorry, I couldn't get through it. You know, it's, pretty heavy read. I don't have time to read and all this. And um, I, I told T. Colin Campbell endorsed my book, which was very generous of him. And I always tell him, I hope this is the entryway book. And then people follow up with the China study because it's such an important read. Um, but yeah, through this process, I, I wanted to make it easier for others. I mean, we also, my dad has Alzheimer's. My grandfather had Alzheimer's. We did the genetic testing and my son and I carry the gene for that. Wow. So it's it's really important, but we know now that genes are 10%, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, but lifestyle really is 90% of whether we get some of these supposedly genetic diseases. So, um, you know, we, we had bumps along the road, uh, and you know, my son, I never remember if he went to a birthday party and he either had six hot dogs and 12 cookies or 12 hot dogs and six cookies because <laughs> we were eating so strictly at home. And so we were like, okay, well, that's not going to work. So we just came up with a lot of different ways to make it the easiest thing for our family. And, um, and then soon other family members and friends started to do this as well. So, um, Flash forward to COVID, I uh, was doing work as, my, my degree is in geography actually, but um, I've been a yoga and Pilates instructor. I did massage for 12 years. And I, most recently I was doing um, a massage technique uh, that helped people get out of chronic pain. It was a neurological technique. And um, it was wonderful helping so many people get out of chronic pain, but COVID shut everything down. And so I was at home and I, I needed a project. And so I thought maybe I'll write a book to help get this information out. And so um, that the book I wrote is a very simple and easy book to read. I, it's designed that way. So the audiobook is less than four hours. It's a really quick read, but it's the basic for why. Why for our bodies is this the best lifestyle? Why for the planet is this the best lifestyle? Mm -hmm. um, and then how? How do you go about doing this? You know, there's there's some really easy tricks to employ um, to make it a very sustainable. I mean, I I wish I didn't have to say the word diet is in the you know right. title, but it's really a lifestyle, not a diet. You know, I suggest people try it for ten days because right. uh, like strictly, and I walk people how through how to do that, but because in that 10 days, like what happened to me in 17 days, um, or what happens to some people in four days, but you start to feel different. You know, once you give up highly processed foods, once you're not eating super sweet or super salty or super fatty foods, um, you'll notice benefits like sleeping better, your skin will improve, your mm -hmm. digestion will improve, all these things. And you can't feel really your blood pressure, your cholesterol changing, or your A1C numbers, but those are changing as well. Right. So um, I really suggest people give it a, a really hard try in the beginning and see how they feel, get their lab work. And then go from there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's been really wonderful. I, I um, 
coach and consult with people now. So it's really fun to get to work with people as well, because some people wrote and just said, I need a little help, you know? Um, so that's a really fun, fun thing to get to do too. And to just hear stories. I mean, every month somebody emails at least somebody, um, you know, a couple months ago it was an 87 year old who I spoke at a senior center last year. And she said, my husband and I've lost 14 pounds and we're off three medications. Wow. So it's just fantastic to see what oh, can wow. happen in such a short amount of time yeah. and for people of any age, really. I yeah. thought I was writing this book for young parents with kids and how to do it, but as it turns out, it's been more retirees yeah. <laughs> who maybe have time in their schedule or maybe are starting to feel um, ill health effects. So, um, but, but it's been a real joy to mm -hmm. share this mm -hmm. as much as I can with the world. That's wonderful. What a great, a great story, a great journey. And um, yeah, I feel like all of us really, those of us who are passionate about this would like to just stand up on the roof and just shout out to everybody and say, come on over. It's fun. <laughs> it's delicious. It's easy. You'll learn how to do it. You take your time, go slow or not yeah. go fast, whatever, right. you know? Yeah. And I address that. I mean, some people are, are slow adopters, you know, they're not people who want to dive in all at once and that's okay too. You can get there the same, the same way, two different routes. Um, but there are reasons for either. So, um, I, I walk people through, like you, you need to know yourself before starting this. Right. Um, that's a, it's a big helpful right. step to just take a moment and go, well, how do I usually do things? Right. You know, am I an early adopter? Do I like to dive in or do I need more information? Right. Um, so yeah. And, yeah. Either, way, and that, either way is fine. No matter where you are in your right. journey is fine. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. The only other thing I, um, I do want to save the world with, with eating whole food, plant-based yeah. no oil. And I, I donate 50% of the process, the, the profits from the book to charity and 1% of gross sales goes to 1% for the planet. So it really is my best attempt at helping people mm -hmm. and the planet. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. I, was, I was taking notes in my head. I, I definitely want to ask you more, maybe off off um, the live about the massage work you did for chronic pain, because my husband is dealing with that. And I'd love to know. Uh, yeah. I'd love to know more about it. Um, I want to yeah. also mention if anybody uh, want, has any questions, feel free to click on the question sticker and put that in there and we'll see it, uh, especially for either of us, either for uh, for Rachel or for myself. Uh, so where should I start? Well, yeah, I want to hear it. Start from the beginning. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to, to 2005. I was diagnosed with alopecia, which is an autoimmune disease that causes your hair to fall out. And there's different types of alopecia. There's an, uh, one where you lose it all over your whole body. There's one where you, you lose it in a sort of um, periphery, like around the the, the periphery of your head, your scalp. And then there's another kind that I have, which you lose it sort of in pieces. And so I had it in two major areas. And uh, I, uh, the doctor told me, the dermatologist said, well, you can take cortisone shots that might help and it might not. And if it helps, it still might fall out again. Or that's all, that's really all we have to offer. So I decided not to do that. And I started exploring and I read a book called Dangerous Grains. Uh, and the book basically says that autoimmune diseases can be traced to gluten. Hmm. The doctor was Ron Hogan. And um, so I said, hmm, gluten. I think, I think my sister one of my three sisters, I think she is dealing with gluten. Now she lived in Florida. I was up in the new England area and we were close, but for whatever reason, she just never talked about it. So I didn't really know much about it. And I called her up and I said, what's this, this gluten thing? And she said, yeah, I have celiac and I have to eat gluten free. And I was just stunned. And I said, wow, I, I looked up gluten free. I looked up celiac and it turns out it's familial. I called up my internist and I said, and this is back in 2005, 2006, when it, it wasn't on the radar screen the way it is today. And I asked my internist, who was rather progressive, if I could have the test, even though I didn't have the stomach symptoms. And she said, sure. She did the test and bingo, I had celiac. Mm -hmm. So I went back to my dermatologist and I asked him about it. And he said, there's no connection. At the time, I figured that he knew what he was talking about. So I just went along my merry way, but I went gluten free because of the celiac. And lo and behold, my hair started growing back. Wow. So wow. 
Um, I still have some hair loss, where you, which you can't see because I have thick enough hair that it's covering it. And uh, oh, and then fast forward from that point in time to 2011 when I started the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which I loved, did a year long program, and I learned about vegan. And I really didn't know about vegan. I grew up in a nice Jewish house where we ate a lot of eggs and butter and cheese and meat and chicken and, you know, all that stuff. And so I started experimenting with veganism, but I was really more sort of a halfway. I wasn't really doing it all the way. And then my sister had a heart event. We don't call it a heart attack, but she had a heart the one, attack. The one with celiac? The one with celiac. She had a heart okay. Heart issue, and she called me up when I was in the middle of in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and she said, "Okay, Miss Fancy Pants, you're in health coaching school. What do I do?" Because you know her doctor, she was in the hospital. She had all the workup. She went home with tons of pills, and she, and they just they didn't talk about food or lifestyle. They just gave her pills. And she, I said, well, go read Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Go read the China study by Colin Campbell and then call me in the morning. So she like three days later, she called. She literally read cover to cover Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And she literally went from, in Yiddish, it's called the balabusta, which is like a cook who just, she, and she has an apron on or he has an apron on all the time. They're cooking all the time. They're great cooks. She went from a Jewish balabusta cook to completely whole food, plant-based, no oil, gluten-free. Wow, good and, for her. And within a very short period of time, she was able to really um, tamp down on her medications. And she did that for a long time and it influenced me. So I did it for about three or four years. And then I met the love of my life. And full stop, <laughs> he was a SAD, Standard American Diet Eater. And I just went right along for the ride. And I started eating what he was eating. And I started having a cocktail every night. It's, oh, it's six o'clock. It's cocktail time. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, within just like 18 months, I put on about two, 20 pounds. And wow. I'm little. I'm petite. I'm sure. So that 20 pounds on somebody else might as well be 40. That's how much it influenced my 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 frame. And so I said, no, 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 no. This won't do. So I started Weight Watchers and I, I went to Whole Food 30 and I tried Bright Line Eating. I tried all these different diets and I, nothing stuck. And I'm not saying anything bad. If you want to do that and it works for you, great. It didn't work for me. And then I said, you know what? Let's go online. I, I found Chef AJ. I found Nutmeg, Nutmeg Notebook. I found all these people who really have been my mentors. They don't know it, but they are my mentors. And I went fully, and that's my personality. I went fully whole food, plant-based. I was already gluten-free. I did the whole food, plant-based, no oil, and I've not looked back since. So it's been about almost five years. Uh, all my indigestion, gone, out the window. Never, never experienced it anymore. I lost the last 10 pounds when I really discovered the power of oatmeal, which is what we we're going to talk a little bit more about. And I am now a hardcore, I want to just let the world know this is like the best thing since sliced gluten-free bread. Right. <laughs> so true. Yeah. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I can't wait to hear the role of oatmeal. Well. And how yeah. interesting. So after reading Dr. Esselstyn's work and also other people who supported his work, um, I... I started religiously, and I mean, every day I would have oatmeal. And I wasn't a big oatmeal person. I don't, I'm not really a mushy food person. I tend to mm -hmm. like crispy. And yeah. so that, that was presented a little bit of a challenge, but I decided to put everything, pardon me, into it and try it. And I experimented and I just, every morning, every single morning, I would have oatmeal of some, in some way, shape or form. I would either have rolled oats, I would have steel cut oats, it was really the two. Um, I tried oat groats for a little bit, was not thrilled with them, but I'm going to go back to it because I just bought this, which is oat groats. And I'm actually sprouting them because I'm going to do a live with uh, Lissa from Raw Food oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm sprouting them. And, um, and lo and behold, I discovered that not only can you have oatmeal that is with fruit, but you can also do savory oatmeal. And that was a game changer. My husband now literally asks for that. Are you making, when I make oatmeal, which I do every morning, are you, are you making the savory one? 
So yeah. I did that. And then I started experimenting with overnight oats. And that was a process because I didn't like it at first, but I really had to figure out the, the, the way to do it. So I, uh, that was that was really what happened with the oatmeal. And the, the habit helped me in so many ways. I think one of the biggest ways is that it took the decision fatigue out, you know, waking up and going, what am I going to have for breakfast this morning? And I didn't have to think about it. I just know I come down and I have oatmeal. That's what I do. And that the the idea of having the same thing every single morning helped me to solidify the habits that really supported a my weight loss b by losing all my um, indigestion and c making that that commitment to being whole food plant based and no oil no butter no oil and by doing that it it spilled over into other aspects of my diet my my food choices because I realized that by creating those habits, that that was what was going to continue to support my decision to follow this lifestyle. And so now, you know, another habit I, I have is almost every day, and I'm not going to say, even with the oatmeal now, I will go back and say, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit, because now <laughs> sometimes I will have, I just sometimes I'll wake up and go, hmm, I think I want to have a chickpea omelet. And so yeah. I'll do that. But oatmeal always makes it into my day Some somehow. I have cookies that I make with oatmeal. I have cheese sauce that I make with oatmeal. So it's it. I make bread with oatmeal. So it, somehow it always does end up in my day. Um, but the other, the other habit that has been pretty steady is I followed what Dr. Furman, Joel Furman says, which is to have uh -huh. a salad every day as big as your head. Uh -huh. So I do that every day. I, I have a, a big salad as big as my head. Sometimes I'll make enough for three days at a time. And that way, you know, it's done. I might change it up a little from day to day, but the habits that I have created as a result of the oatmeal habits is what enabled me to lose the last 10 pounds. And I will also say for anybody out there that's listening, who was a slave to the scale, I get you. I was a slave to the scale. I mean, the scale that you weigh yourself on. I'd weigh yeah. myself every single day. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't get dressed until I weighed myself. And I, I really was a slave. I was a prisoner to that scale. And for the last couple of years, I noticed that I would vacillate between three pounds. I didn't know what it could have been salt that maybe I had the night before. It could have been that maybe my muscles are, you know, I'm gaining more muscle because I'm working out at the gym, who knows, but I would pretty much go back and forth between these, th those three pounds. And that was pretty predictable for a couple of years. And then I, it's only been about two months. I just realized I didn't do this intentionally. I stopped weighing myself. It's a whole game changer, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, mouth open, jaw dropped. I was for years, I weighed myself every morning, like I had to do that. And now I don't have to do it anymore because I know that the way I'm eating clearly is sustaining me in a way that I'm staying in that three pound range. And yeah. it just, I feel like a new person. I feel like I have birthed a new person. Yeah. And there's such freedom, I think, in not allowing something that you see first thing in the morning, right? To, to determine your outlook on the day or your outlook on yourself for that day, mm -hmm. you know? And like you said, we're talking about maybe water weight if you have some salt or something. And that can just think, yeah, I, I am a big fan of not looking yeah. at the scale. Yeah, yeah, I go by the same, you know, if my clothes, I start to feel them tight, then I'm like, okay, I'll jump on the scale and see, is this in my head or is this real? Right. Um, and then make adjustments. But right. yeah, I, I love the fact that, like you said, even if oatmeal isn't your breakfast now every single morning, that habit started you down the track of being able to sustain this lifestyle, right. which is so wonderful. I, I have oatmeal on my smoothie this morning, actually. <laughs> Do you ever put oats in smoothies? Uh, you, inside, you, you made the smoothie with oats? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, you can get them in everything. I have my peanut butter balls here, too, and I put oat bran and oats in there. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you said, they can go in almost any part of your yeah. daily breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You can yeah. get them in there. And, and if you... If you're still um, a little bit suspicious and you're like, yeah, 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 right, oats, uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I'm not a medical doctor and I don't know I, the, the, all the big fancy words, but I do know, based on what I've learned from Dr. Esselstyn, I do know that your arteries need to be nice and clear. Think of a pipe or a tube. They need to be nice and clear. And when you eat foods that 
are full of cholesterol and full of fat, what happens to the artery? Think of it like a tube. You know what? I'm going to get a straw out because it'll, it'll show what I'm talking about. You know, if you have a straw like this, right? Think of the tube. And if you eat foods that are high in, cal uh, high in saturated fat, and cholesterol, what happens is that the inside of the tube starts to get gunked up, right? And right. it occludes the blood from flowing through the tube. And people who go whole food plant-based, what happens is that the arteries start to clear up, the plaque starts to disappear, and your blood can flow through nice and nice and clear. The, the pipe is clear. So that is good enough for me because my family has a history of heart uh, issues. My, my, mm -hmm. Both my mother and father, my father, may he rest in peace, died from, um, he had atherosclerosis, you know, terrible. Um, he died, died of a stroke. My mother ended up having a whole bunch of of difficult challenges, chronic challenges, but she also had to have surgery on her carotid artery because it was blocked. And it's, it's somewhere, I think it goes up here. Yeah. And yeah. so I have a family full of it. And yeah. I wanted to do what I could to really, I want to see my grandkids grow up. I want to be that 92 year old who um, you and I, when I get to 92, I want you to to say, let's do an Instagram live and talk about how we're doing yoga and still walking three miles a day. I want to be that person, you know? I know. It's like Ann Esselstyn. I mean, she's not quite that, that age yet, but pulling tractor tires. I you know, know, right? I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a Facebook person. I'm also streaming on a Facebook who asked, do I find, do you find it affecting blood sugar levels? And I would say for me, now I don't test my blood sugar levels, but I am a, a devotee of mastering diabetes. And I would highly recommend if you're concerned about that to, um, to find them, they're all over socials, go to YouTube, listen to their uh, YouTube videos, read their book. They have a book called Mastering Diabetes. And not that that's the be all end all. I mean, everybody's going to be different. You might want to get a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, a monitor. Glucose. You might want to get a, a gluco glucose monitor and test yourself. I've been meaning to do that. I just haven't yet. Even though I, I consult with some people who do that and they get all freaked out because their blood sugar spikes after they eat, but that's actually normal. That's normal. <laughs> that, that's what happens. So right. if you, I, I caution people like, you know, if you're, if your healthcare professional suggests that go mm -hmm. for it or do some research before. So right. you're not scared. Right. But the oatmeal, you know, things with high fiber help blunt that effect, help, right. you know, regulate the blood right. sugar, how your body is using that blood sugar. So right. oatmeal, vegetables, right. greens, I mean, all right. these things really help. And then you can eat fruit and enjoy it. I mean, we're not right. suggesting candy bars ever. Right. <laughs> but right. healthy, right. you know, healthy versions of it, you might be able to do. Right. This part right. This person's on Facebook said I'm on a continuous monitor. It's a CGM, okay. I think. Yeah, okay. continuous glucose okay. monitor. If you read um, and, or listen to follow uh, Mastering Diabetes, you know, the idea is that if you get rid of the fat, the fat, the oil, the butter, that fat is what makes it difficult for your blood sugar. And I can't explain it any more than that because I don't, I don't have enough articulation about it. Maybe, do, I don't yeah. know if you do. Well, I don't have a lot either, but I think, um, is it Gregor Esselstyn talks about the fat gunks up like your body has it's like a key in the cell, right? It needs to unlock so that the insulin can be released and, and deal with the blood sugar that's in your, in your blood. Right. Um, but what fat does it, is it gunks up that hole. Like right. the key is not able to go in. So right. it's not actually fruit that diabetics have a hard time with. It's that they have fat in their system. Right. That's not allowing their body right. to deal with fruit. Sure. So I love mastering diabetes. You know, they, they will make posts like, what fruit should you not eat? Like none of it, eat all of right. it. It's eat so all good of it. for you. It's not the fruit right. that's hurting you. <laughs> so, and yeah. I'll say this for the person who's on Facebook, find me on Facebook and send me a message and I'll send you a link for mastering diabetes so that you don't have to. Yeah. And for I, it. I just saw somebody ask their son-in-law has type one does mastering diabetes. Yes. Um, one of the founders of mastering diabetes has type one diabetes. Yes. He's living with, and they help people with type one, type two, right. all of them. Right. My, mm -hmm. my husband actually has type one and a half. Mm -hmm. and, which is um, adult onset diabetes, uh, and, and yeah. it's the autoimmune version of it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, that's actually Cyrus, I believe, as yeah, well. I think he has diabetes. one and a half. Too. I think that's his. And he he has been following. My husband has been following predominantly following the way I eat. He still has some other, you know, 
non whole food plant based things, but not very much. And he's been able to keep his blood sugar down. And um, I will say this also, I want to say this about the fruit. I think that we all grew up hoodwinked and brainwashed into thinking we couldn't eat big meals. We couldn't eat very often. Don't eat a lot of fruit. It's too fattening. You know, all that stuff that ha has been like implanted like a chip in our brain. And even with me being at this lifestyle for, for almost five years, there are still times where I think, oh, maybe, I, maybe I'm eating too much or too much fruit. And uh, like I said earlier, for me, this journey has happened in, I want to say like this, it's been up, steady up, but sometimes I come back down but still I go back up. That's how it's been for me. And fruit is the latest, newest addition to the piece of, to, it's an, the newest piece of the puzzle. And just recently I said, you know what? I love fruit. I'm not going to even think about it. I'm not going to monitor it. I'm not going to count it. I'm going to eat fruit whenever and wherever and how much I want. And so lo and behold, that's what I've been doing. And oh my goodness, I don't even think about moderation. What I do think about was that was also another thing. Moder we, we've always, we've been hoodwinked into thinking that everything in moderation. No, no, no. I don't believe that that's true. That's for me. If you want to go by it, then all the power to you. But for me, what I do is I listen to what I call my hunger fullness cues. I listen to them. Instead of stuffing myself because I need to eat every bite on the plate, I think to myself, you know, you've left about, a, a, you know, a, a quarter of a cup, a half a cup, a cup, whatever on your plate. I just say, okay, well, I'm full. I'm not going to stuff it into my mouth. And <clears throat> what I do more than anything is I save my leftovers. And a lot of times my leftovers are still delicious. They're good the next day. So I put them in a bowl, I cover them, I stick them in the fridge. And the next morning, while I'm making my oatmeal, I preload with my leftovers, which are usually some form of vegetable, maybe beans, who knows, maybe grains. <clears throat> and I have that before I have my oatmeal. And yeah. that's just th this whole new a realization about the fruit. That's like I said, the next piece of my journey. Yeah. I remember I was on a, um, a call with Dr. Gregor, um, healthy world Sedona had last year. And somebody asked like, well, how, how many, how much grapes can I eat? Like, I don't want to eat too much. And he's like, eat five pounds of grapes. Like you can't eat too many. Like your body won't be able to hold them. You know, like you can eat them all day. Really. You're not going to have too much. Um, and you're right. You bring up a good point. I feel like oftentimes, especially people who are trying to lose weight, who, um, come to this because they want to lose those last 10 pounds or get off the diet rotation or whatever. It, the hardest thing for them is to eat enough. And that does take some time to, to right. learn because right. you, like you said, for most of us who were watching our weight, you know, a lot of our lives, we're trying to eat portion control stuff right. and all of that. And you don't really understand calorie density. I didn't um, until learning about whole food plant-based eating. But once you figure that out, it's like such an amazing thing. Because like you said, you can eat so much, even though it's going to be less calories at the end of the day, you can eat so much food, which for me is such a benefit because I love to eat. So I love not counting any macros or micros or calories or any of that. I don't right. measure food at all. Right. Um, I go by what I'm hungry for right. and how, when I'm full. And that, and that does, like you said, it takes some time to, to clue in, to slow down and pay attention to your body and go, oh, this feeling is full. Or maybe it's hungry. Sometimes when people are starting to eat this way um, and they haven't quite got down, you know, the calorie density thing two hours after they ate a meal that they felt was really large, they'll get hungry again. Right. So that's a great time to pull oh, out yeah, those yeah, leftovers yeah. too, or have yeah, a piece yeah, of yeah. fruit. Oh, you bring up such a good point actually, because it, you know, the old brainwashed part of us was like breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, and right. maybe you have a snack of a, a little piece of fruit or something. Um, I just listen to my hunger fullness cues. And if I eat a meal and two hours later, I'm still like, hungry or I feel a little snicky snacky, I just grab, you know, I grab something that is in my kitchen and, and I have it. And it's right. really been, it's been a great um, journey for me to help me learn how to undo and to de detangle, untangle the, yep. the old habits that have been brainwashed into us. Um, the person on Facebook, I don't see their name. I'm so sorry. Um, 
says, uh, I never thought fruit is bad, everything in moderation. And she said, I mean, permission to have fruit if that's what I want. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I do. And that's what we do. We just, yeah. we just yeah. say, okay, you know, I mean, sometimes I'll have a meal of just fruit. I make a yeah. big, big plate of fruit and I just have that. Uh, yeah. And sometimes I'll be in the mood to have dates and I'll take a date and I'll open it and I'll spread it with some almond butter. You know, it just really depends on my mood. So it's been, it's really been such a wonderful journey. And I am, I just want to keep teaching people about it. And I love what you said before about speaking at senior centers. Is that what you said? Yeah. And yeah. I, I would love to be able to do that. I guess I just have to call some of them locally and say, I'd love to come and speak to you about, you know, about oh. eating healthy. It's so wonderful. Yeah, I took um, the re a recipe, Jeff Novick, um, generously giving his longevity soup recipe. It's in my book. And so we made um, longevity soup before. And then uh, we made overnight oats while we were there after the talk. So everybody got to try a soup and, and take some. So it was fantastic. I mean, people were we're really excited about it. Yeah. I was going to say something to your point about, um, you know, if you're hungry, you just go to your kitchen and get something, um, which is fantastic and something I highly encourage. But I talked about in, in my book, um, for Fork's sake, how to clean out your kitchen because oh, yeah. your kitchen is a clean kitchen and you can eat whatever is there. Right? right. Um, but a lot of people, if you still have that, you know, junk food drawer or, um, hidden Halloween candy or whatever, um, then it can be really tempting if you're trying to right. eat this way. So it is really imperative to, uh, if you're making the decision to get rid of things that you don't want to eat, because as chef AJ says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Right. I was so. just going to say that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that was also enlightening. Um, I, I do have some things in the house because, but I don't eat them uh, because like yeah. I said, my husband is still a little bit of um, still, I'm, I'm con convincing him little by inches to, to make changes, yeah. but it, you know, or if you have that stuff in your house and you don't want to eat it, but you're, family wants to eat it. You know, mm -hmm. there are ways around it. You can just say to them, I need you to support me. This is important. Mm -hmm. I want you to put it in a place. Don't tell me where it is or, you know, whatever, just try to figure yeah. out a way to make it so that they understand how important it is for you to do this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, back to you. I was going to ask you one thing when you were talking about your savory oats, it reminded me, have you ever tried Dr. Gregor's broll recipe? Yes, I have tried it. Our, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have tried it. We've not for a while. I mean, I still love, we'll go back to um, Ann Esselstyn's savory. I mean, that's what we'll yes, do yeah. greens and mushrooms and yeah. it's fantastic. My daughter, when she was living at home, my, my kids are both away at college now and choosing to eat this way on their own. They're both whole food, plant-based, no oil. Um, and, but yeah, that was, that was her favorite yeah. way to eat oatmeal. Yeah. The, the hard thing for people, you know, you're talking about your kids being young. I think the hard thing for people our, me our medical system is designed to treat people who are ill. Yeah. And instead of treating people to help them not get ill. Right. And that's, uh, that's the upside down. That is absolutely upside down, you know? It is. And it's so hard for people uh, like, me included in the beginning, like no doctor has ever said this to me, right? But we have doctors who haven't been trained. They they maybe had one nutrition class and that was on like the biomechanics of how nutrition works in your body. Right. Doctors themselves don't know this information yeah. often. So you're right. Our system is wonderful when you have, um, you know, uh, you need a surgery or you need something, you know, life-threatening taken care of. Right. Um, but we're not great at preventative medicine for sure. Right. And I mean, you just look at the state of healthcare and the state of Americans. I mean, the, the graphs are horrible for the amount of money we have as a country yeah. where we're at. Longevity is ridiculous. I mean, most of Europe and many other countries are way ahead of us. Right. Uh, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen the, um, the series, the blue zone series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I highly recommend that. I actually am totally yeah. forgetting what it's called, but if you look up Dan Butner, B-U-E-T-T-N-E-R, and yeah. I think it's on Netflix. It's, I think I'm yeah. due to, I'm due to watch it again. I, I, I think once a year, it's good to refresh and watch Forks Over Knives, watch Game Changers, watch um, What the Health, watch, yeah. you know, watch this new Blue Zone series. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's worth taking some time. The, the thing that I think one of the things that's the hardest for me is, is helping people understand that if they don't realize it, but it's almost like by not paying attention to this and by not paying attention to eating 
I believe that this is the best way to eat. I know you do too. That it's almost like there's they're holding off a tidal wave. It's coming. It's coming. You might not feel it right now, but I guarantee you it's coming. If it's not coming to you, it's coming to your spouse or your neighbor or your son or your daughter or your relatives or your some your neighbor. It's coming. And I don't want to scare people. And yet I do want them to understand that if they don't do something now, they're going to get to a point where they have a, a chronic disease or a disease that is is going to be fatal. And yeah. they can they can do they can do something about it, and they don't have to call their doctor. They they can do something about it. I've read so many stories on I'm a, I'm a really like a, a junkie around reading empowering stories about people who have made changes because it just continues to affirm the decisions that I've made. Yeah. So many people who have changed their lives by simply making a choice to take what's on their fork and make a choice about it. Yeah. Uh, even in the bundle, I think there are three people that I can think of that have lost between 190 and 200 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, their stories are in the bundle, their books. Yeah. And so um, I agree. I think it's really important to um, revisit these inspirational stories, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I also suggest having the, the library of all the amazing documentaries out there now yeah. on plant-based eating. There's so many, and I have a list in the book and, and on my website so that people can, you know, pick one. If you're feeling like in a rut, you know, you're kind of tired of the same old things you're eating or something, it's great to just yeah. watch a documentary right. or, you know, look at a McDougal, Star yeah. McDougler, read yeah, a story. Yeah. 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 The Star McDougler stories are great. I love reading them. Um, I have found, I will say for, for people who are listening, I have found that one of the key to my success is sauces. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. They're a game changer, they're really, game changer. for anything. They're a totally a game changer. Maybe not so much for breakfast, but for lunch, for my other meals of the day, um, I, I have a vegan mayonnaise that I make that is out, out of this world. And my husband now says to me, you can use that mayonnaise for anything you make for me that calls for mayonnaise. You just use that. And uh, I also, is it tofu based or what is the base? It's tofu based. I've experimented sometimes, yep, yep. you know, sometimes I might like, for example, if I happen to have some white beans left in the fridge from something yep. I made the night before and I want to make my vegan mayonnaise, I will do it with less tofu and I will then replace the less tofu with or half of the tofu with the white beans. So it just, yeah. I experiment with it, but that's one that I, and then I'll, I'll use California balsamic uh, on top of it. Sometimes I'll put sriracha on it. You know, there's just different, different things that you can do. Um, I make a cheese sauce that is, I make a, a bunch of different, sometimes I use mashed potato flakes to make cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use whole potatoes that I cook with carrots and onions. And then I use that in my blender. And it's just the world is your oyster. There's so many options for you to choose. It's just unbelievable. I also want to say this. I felt a little bit, I hesitated for a moment when I was putting the title up of this live. I, I wrote, I lost the last 10 pounds because there's a big part of me that doesn't want to suggest that that's my MO. Initially it was, that was the door I walked through. I wanted to lose that last 10 pounds. Um, but it's not the door that I, I walk through anymore. But unfortunately, so many people feel that, that that's their, that's the door they're walking through to lose the last 10 pounds. And if that's yeah. the case, then, okay, great. If that's what's going to help you, I can pretty much guarantee you that once you walk through that door, once you lose that last 10 pounds, you're going to want to continue, hopefully, to eat this way, to live this way. And you're going to realize that the last 10 pounds, like what happened to me, you're going to stop caring about it because you're going to yeah. reap so many other benefits. Right. But I mean... 70% of the US, right, is obese, 90% is overweight almost, right? So there are a lot of people in the same boat who are wanting, are looking for a solution. And I would offer, you know, if, if somebody has to take pills because they can't do it otherwise, maybe that's what your healthcare professional is going to recommend. And, and maybe that's what you need to take. But this is like a risk-free way to go about it. This right. is an inexpensive, uh, there, there are no 
bad side effects to, to trying right. this, you know? So I, I always suggest that people give this a go first for right. weight loss, but you're right. Sometimes I have people I'll be speaking and they'll raise their hand and say, actually, I'm looking to gain weight. You know, what about my husband? He can't gain weight. We need to gain weight. Um, or it wouldn't work for us because, you know, we always are needing to gain weight. And to that, I just say, it's really easy and lucky you, you get to add in instead of, you know, cheese sauce made from potatoes, you can make cashew cheese sauce, you know, you can add nuts and avocado and all these amazing sources of natural fat that is good for you, not saturated fat. Um, that will be fantastic for you and help you with weight gain if right. that's what you're looking for as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it really is kind of a one stop. I mean, it, it fits everybody, whether right. you're looking to gain or lose it, just, right. you can, you can work with it for whatever you need right. for your body. So I, I want to, I want us just, we're, we're in the home stretch and I'm going to ask us to each give our listeners a call to action. But before I get there, I want to mention just a reminder that if you want to have access to and benefit by, and I trust you, you will be benefited by it, the amazing bundle of over 150 eBooks and courses and videos and doctor interviews and doctor contributions and recipes over what, 2000? I mean, there's so many recipes. Please go to the link in either my bio on Instagram or on Rachel's, or you can, if you're not sure where to find it, just send us a private, a direct message on any platform, message us. Uh, and um, I, I want you to just do it soon because it's over on the 10th and then you won't have access to it. So do it as soon as you're, as soon as you can. So, okay. The call to action thing. I like to, I like to do this. The call to action is I'm going to ask you to give our listeners, we'll both do this, give our listeners a call to action. What's something that they can do to enhance, start, wherever they are in their journey, what's something they can do? So I would say start by making something today. So maybe it's a busy day, maybe you already packed your lunch or your dinner or whatever, but um, or you're planning on going out for lunch, but I would say start with making something. It doesn't have to be difficult. I have um, my peanut butter ball recipe um, that is in the book, page 61. I mean, these are super easy. Ooh, there are ooh. as many ingredients or as little ingredients as you want. They can be made like truffles. Mm -hmm. um, so to pick something easy, like you were saying, it could be oatmeal. You could make today, you can make overnight oats for tomorrow. And it's as simple as putting some oats, some fruit or dates or dried fruit, whatever you want in it. Um, a little spice cinnamon, maybe some turmeric and black pepper for inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, add your plant-based milk or your water and stick it in the fridge. And there you go. You've mm -hmm. made something. So I just would like people to get back in the habit of um, getting creative and making something that they're going to enjoy later. Because once you start to flex that muscle, it won't be as intimidating to get in the kitchen and go, like you said, sometimes that feeling of like, oh, what are we going to have for breakfast? Or what are we going to have for dinner? Um, so my call to action would be, Pick something and something healthy and, and make something today. Cool. Okay. That's excellent. So my call to action is, first of all, my own personal call to action is to look at those cho that, the chocolate balls recipe in <laughs> yeah. your book on page 61. 61, yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. going to be making that today. So that's my own personal one. But for everybody out there who's listening, um, I, my call to action is to embrace oatmeal. And to decide whether you want to make, whether you can make it, um, you can make it tomorrow morning. You can make it today for lunch. It's not really, it's not just for breakfast. You can make it for a snack even. And just embrace the idea of oatmeal as a way to help you get healthy. And I also want to say that one more thing. There's always this one more thing. Uh, one more thing. Um, I, a friend of mine is on Facebook and he's a musician as am I. And how wonderful it was for me to lose the indigestion and how that affected my singing. I'm a singer and a guitarist and a pianist. And it it really made it so much easier for me to sing because I lost my all the indigestion. So um, that's for him. I don't know if he's still listening, but it's for my friend Ross. So anyway, yeah. my, my CTA, my call to action is embrace oatmeal. Make something with oatmeal today, whether you buy the bundle and get and go to page 61 of Rachel's book for Fork's sake. I love it because I have to think about what I'm saying when I say it. 
<laughs> we all do. Yeah. Um, or, or um, you know, go back on, you know, in your own repertoire and find an oatmeal recipe. Go online. Go to my YouTube. Uh, not my YouTube. Well, you can go to my YouTube or my Instagram or my Facebook um, or DM me and I'll send you a recipe. And, um, and last but not least, my CTA, and I think we both can say this, is buy the bundle because it's worth it. And do it now because you're thinking of it. And yeah. Oh, Sophia says she's eating oatmeal right now. Yay. Oh, that's, that's my daughter, actually. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> she, she's up in Washington State. We're in California. And I was going to tell her she and some friends are coming home for the spring break. And these are going to be in the freezer for them oh. um, because I've been making them on these lives. And they're so easy to stick yeah. in the freezer. But I think you can probably see. I mean, you can see the whole rolled oatmeal flakes in here, you know, the whole rolled oats. But all of these have oat bran in them. So you know, these peanut butter balls could be your, yeah, your oatmeal your call to action for everybody. So, okay. Before we hang up, I'm going to take a screenshot of us because I'm going to use it. And um, if there's, yeah, I was just going to ask you to do that. So I, that way I get your whole head in. Okay. Are you, are you ready? Hold up your book. Here we go. One, two, three. Perfect. 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 All right. So uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for agreeing to be my guest here on of Instagram course. Live. I'm really delighted. And uh, I feel like I have yet another friend in the whole food plant based world. And I'm really delighted. And the next time I go to uh, San Francisco for a, a gig, I'm going to call yes. you. I'm going to call you. Please do. That would be lovely. OK, terrific. Thank yeah. you so much, everybody. Thanks for being here. We really, really, really appreciate it. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.